Hello folks, um, this would be part number three in the series. Um, I wanted to record this one to um, further extend the analysis into uh, the area where we actually find out um, where exactly is the thread that runs the anti-cheat created and maybe we can tackle that a bit. Um, I have already patched a DLL of mine uh, well, in the folder where the game is, that this Ansel SDK64, um, in such a way that the entry point will look for kernel base, will look for the API, query full process image name W, and then we'll um, make it so it's writable uh, for a size of 5 bytes, and then it will basically do whatever you, um, you saw in this post here. 33, I think it was the page. Yeah. So XOR rax rax return translates to these bytes 48, 31, C0, C3, and then an op operation here. And once this is done, the original instruction at uh, the DLL entry point is executed and the code resumes execution. So what happens when I run this? You'll see that the um, the API, this API, is already patched. Of course, Steam will want to run a second process, so attach into the second process. And now, if you go to, uh, I always forget the name of this API because it's a long one. Query full process image name w and you can see it's already patched exactly as i was saying so when the dll is loaded it does all of those operations and it patches the dll however if we resume the game uh, i'm just going to try to remove any breakpoints i have here however if you re resume the game you'll see that it runs Okay, and the game starts. And there we go. But even though that API is patched exactly as I did show it to you, so we have the API patched, there is a second check. And that happens. Um, Here, and you can see the error. Uh, what happens is the process, as I mentioned in that post on, on uh, Fearless Forums, um, the process runs uh, a second um, callback function, which um, iterates through all of the windows, all of the windows belonging to processes, and then it checks if those windows have sub-windows that have a certain name, and the name that they these people look for, or I don't know if it's just the nouveau in general, is add address manu. So it stops basically here without the alley. So when it finds a subwindow, like this button right here with the name add address manu, then it will say, well, this is cheat engine because, well, let's say that name of the button is not specific to any application out there. So basically they determined an element in the graphical user interface of Cheat Engine that by which they can perform that detection. So instead of actually doing this API modification and then trying to further, um, let's say, kill the other thread, I thought, why not go and find the actual thread that's doing all of this and try to basically find a way to kill that instead. So it's either not created or it's created suspended which was an interesting uh, approach to, to do. So what I did was to um, continue from this message box. I paused the process. Here's another thing you, you can learn right now. And when you press Alt F9, like this one, it says run to use the code. What the debugger will do is to wait for you. Uh, well, doesn't seem to work like I wanted to. 
and that is because something's running in here. But normally, so if I close this one, let's see. F12, Alt F9. Ah, come on, man. Yeah, normally um, uh, when you press Alt F9, uh, the process runs exactly like it is right now running. And when you click OK, it basically gets you back to the caller of uh, this message box. So, since it didn't work for me, just restore the game and make it so I'm detected. But message box A. Okay. And I'll just run cheat engine just so I'm caught. There we go. And then from here. Okay, right-clicking doesn't want to work, so 1532B1F66. Yeah, for some reason, right-clicking lags. Uh, so, we're here. And exactly as Tim mentioned, there is a thread that runs here. Oh, come on, dude. Okay. And the address is this one. So I'm just going to... This is very annoying. Okay, just copy. Notepad. I'm just going to put it here. So what we want to do is to determine who exactly uh, gives the go-ahead for this, for this function to be run. I look for references to it and... Um, Let's say I couldn't find any to begin with. I'm assuming that this is uh, due to uh, Denuvo's unpacking code internally, or maybe I couldn't find the reference properly. But what I thought I would do is to use uh, a breakpoint on create thread API and try to determine where exactly this thread is initiated. So, closing, restarting the process, passing steam initialization. Well, you want to do one thing right and right clicking doesn't want to work. Come on, man. Alt A. Attach. So, what I can do now is create thread. Okay, I'm just going to close this one because it's annoying. And try and reopen it. Okay, there we go. File attach. So now create thread. And I'm not going to use a normal breakpoint like this one here because um, although you don't see it, when you do this, or maybe Cheat Engine can show it to you, for example. Uh, MK11, no, go to create thread. So whenever you press F2, which is a user mode breakpoint, this happens. See that CC byte here? You don't see it in the debugger, but you do see it in, in Cheat Engine. Uh, the fact that you modify that byte to CC, which generates uh, an exception, uh, is something that, for example, the Nouveau can catch in terms of uh, you trying to do something in there. So they do have these uh, API checks in order for uh, integrity to be, to be kept in place just so you don't tamper with the APIs. So in, in order for us not to have this situation happen, what we can do is breakpoint set hardware and execution. Nothing happening here, so we'll now let the game run and monitor the stack here, looking at R8 and checking when this address shows up in this sub window. So F9, 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 F9. There we go. So this is our thread for the sleep and the anum child windows.
callback function and suspend thread, close handle, message box, get current process, and then terminate process. So this is the, the detection thread. So what we want to do now is with the API broken right here at create thread, we want to follow this address in this assembler and take a look. So this is basically where the thread is created. Now, if we take a look at msdn2.com and create thread, it will say that the parameters are as follows. LP thread attributes is RCX, our RCX. The stack size is in RDX. The um, routine, the uh, address of the function that the thread will run once created is this one, and it's RCX RDX R8. Then we have R9 L parameter, and then in the stack we have the creation flags and the thread ID. So if we take a look at the order in which the events occur here, we have RCX is 0, RDX is 0, R8 is the function, this one, the detection function. Then we have R9 with the thread, uh, R9 is um, LP parameter. And then in the stack we have two double words, which both are 0 as you can see. First one and the second one. So here, when we look at the creation flags, what I noticed is you can create the thread. So the, the actual um, protection, the nouveau, creates a thread with the parameter set to zero, which means the thread runs immediately after creation. What happens if we create it as suspended with value four? Let's take a look. So what I'm going to do uh, is to get back to this creation code, and I'm going to set up breakpoint like let's say right here up top I'll remove the breakpoint on create thread and then restart the process attach and then just let the game run up to the point where that thread is created there we go we have a break so here I'm just going to trace with f8 get current thread ID, do stuff like this, then do some operations in here. Here is where the, the parameter is being set to R8, which is our third parameter. So one, two, three. So R8 is the LP starch address. So this is basically the reference I was looking for, but I couldn't find it. So this is our detection function. We'll let it be set here. And then in R9, we have uh, the stack size. As you can see, the size is uh, 2B, meaning 43 bytes or 43 kilobytes, something like that, DW stack size. And then we continue with the flow till we get here. So we see that RCX, our value, followed in dump, already contained a value of four. And the code, what, what it does is to set it to zero. If we look at the parameters here, we have these values so far. But once we get to the API, you'll see that the information here changes. So there we go. So we have zero, zero, the function, um, the LP parameter, and then the creation flags and the thread ID in stack. And you can see two zeros here. So if we change the first one to four, as in create suspended, and then let this code run and press F9 to resume the game. Now I should have used for the demo the unpatched DLL, just so you see that even without patching the API, this still works. So right now we have a suspended thread. If we look uh, in the threads list, um, you'll see that it's not there. That is because it hasn't been resumed. I tried to find it by the entry point. Remember that address of ours? And it's not here. If you look at the... These are basically the addresses from the game space. The one starting with 1.4. <clears throat> so, as you can see, Cheat Engine is open. 
There was no detection whatsoever. Uh, but with the original DLL put in place, just so... Was it? Query full process image. So go query full process image W process image name W. Okay, so what I want to do is to also remove these patches, uh, these bytes being patched here. So what I'll do, I'll just kill the process. I'll restore the, let's call this patched. I'll restore the original DLL just so nothing happens. And then run the game. Attach. And let it run up to the point where that thread is created. And we go all the way down here. Okay, and then follow RCX and dump and set the value to 4. Okay, so the game runs. Let's check the API. See, now it's not patched anymore. It's This is the, its original form. So these the first 5 bytes up top here were patched to the information that you saw here. And now they're not. Okay, we'll let the game run. Uh, you can also see that cheat engine is already open and nothing happens. So, um, the fact that we started that detection thread with parameter 4, as in create suspended, pretty much works like uh, what Tim did. As in, instead of uh, using that 4 value there, he basically uh, modified the entry point of the function the thread drop to return without executing anything in it. So it's basically a thread that constantly exits. But I wanted to show you what happens if you find the, the creation code for the thread and if you store it as suspended. So right now nothing is detected and you have yet another method that can be potentially used in the future in case de novo starts adding more um, <clears throat> detection schemes into the whole process. Uh, this way, if you kill the whole thread, well, you'll be done with it very fast. You don't have to worry um, about anything that happens inside the function the thread creates. Uh, the thread runs, sorry. So, yeah. Thank you for watching. This was Sunbeam. Bye-bye.